save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver. to our liturgy at Maternity BBM Parish. We would like to extend a warm welcome to our parishioners and any guests worshiping with us today. Let us sing, O Come All Ye Faithful.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, today we join Christians throughout the world who are celebrating the birth of the Savior. To celebrate so wondrous a mystery that the Son of God becomes one with us in the flesh. Communities, large and small, gather to give thanks for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, who promises to be with us always. We add our praise to this great multitude. So let us raise our hearts to God and open ourselves to the mysteries before us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, and you fill the earth with glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Today, O God of light, your loving kindness dawns, your tender compassion shines upon us. 
For in our Savior, born of human flesh, you reveal your gracious gift of our birth to life eternal. Fill us with wonder on this holy day. Let us treasure in our hearts what we have been told, that our lives may proclaim your great and gentle mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, 
as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the midst of the darkness, we have seen a great light. Christ is born for us. Jesus dwells among us. Alleluia. Christ is our light now and forever. God has shattered the darkness of night with the light of his Son, Jesus Christ. As we listen to our reading from Isaiah, Maybe it resonates with us just a little more this year than most. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Maybe in the year 2020, 
we can really identify with it because so many more of us personally have walked in darkness and many of us personally know the challenges of darkness that others are facing. We go into 2021 with rays of hope, promises of new approaches to solving the COVID-19 pandemic, but also with new challenges as well. Some challenges of which we are aware, other challenges that will greet us as the months continue on. On this day, we realize that even after centuries since Jesus Christ appeared in the flesh on that holy night, that our world still walks in darkness. Even after proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, we are still in need of conversion to God's ways. And our world at times seems to be going in the opposite direction of the light. As a society, we are a broken people. And as individuals, each of us shares in that brokenness. But Christmas is a time for us to pause and to rejoice. It gives us pause to remember that light has entered the world. As Paul said in his letter to Titus, the grace of God has appeared before us. He came to the world to save us and to train us to avoid godless ways and worldly desires. Among shepherds who were considered lowly, among two travelers who could not find room at the end or a proper welcome for a child to enter into the world in a place forgotten and forlorn, God's saving light began to shine. The prophecies began to be fulfilled in a way that only a few people could recognize at that time. Today, it is a time, even amidst our brokenness, to rejoice that light has entered the world. Even if at times we feel distant from that light, or we are weighed down by darkness of guilt, we can rejoice on this day that Jesus Christ came into the world to save us and to set us free from the darkness so that we may live in the light now and for eternity. So no matter how things seem this year, no matter how many terrible moments there may have been, no matter what bad circumstances we may have found ourselves in, let us rejoice because Jesus Christ has entered the world and opened for us the gates of heaven. God lo God's love has come to earth, and we can rejoice now and forever. Today, we are called to be like the herald of the choirs of angels, to be like the star of Bethlehem, that our lives may point the way to Jesus Christ. This day, let us go to Bethlehem to see what, was, what has happened. Let us go to see this thing that God has told us about. Let us do homage once more to our newborn Savior and allow ourselves to be captured in the wonder of Christmas. But then, as we return to our work, to our studies, to our day-to-day -day routine. When we return to our morning coffee and our newspaper and are about ready to begin the day, let us continue our mission. We are called to be bearers of the light of Christ, that Christ will come alive in us, that Christ will come alive in our actions, words, in our presence in the world, that the light we bring 
to others may shine on those who walk in darkness. In this time, when so many are encountering darkness, it is time for us to take the light that we have encountered in this celebration and take it into the world that we will be missionary disciples who share the light and love of Christ with others. With hearts full of gratitude for the gift of Jesus, let us lift our prayers to God. For all who believe in Jesus, the promised one, that they share the good news in humility and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of every country, large and small, rich and poor, that they work together for lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling, that those experiencing illness, hardship, or pain at this time may know of God's love and care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, that life together may be marked by kindness, gentleness, patience, self-control, affection, and good humor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all maternity BVM parishioners and all present here, that the joy of Christmas bear fruit in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, for all members of our families and of this community who have gone before us that those who are grieving may know companionship and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Glorious God, we praise you for the gift of your Son, the Savior who came to bring us peace and justice. We ask you to hear our prayers and grant them through Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the, the, the sacrifice at your hands the for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Viator, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. Therefore, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Salvation has come into our world. Let us pray for the fullness of these mysteries as we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we wish you the peace of Christ, and if others are gathered with you, take the time now to wish one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Cold are the people, winter of life. We tremble in shadows this cold, endless night. Frozen in the snow lie roses sleeping, flowers that will echo the sunrise. Fire of hope is our only warmth. Weary, its flame will be dying
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this mystery and to love them ever more and more. Through Christ our Lord. And on this Christmas Day, we conclude with a note of gratitude to the staff of Maternity BVM Parish, to Father Dan, to Deacon Skelly, to all the volunteers, for all who have helped in the preparation of the celebration of Christmas, for creating a beautiful environment, for preparing the liturgy, and for all the many countless tasks that make it all possible, we extend our heartfelt gratitude this Christmas season as we welcome anew our newborn Savior and celebrate that moment when Christ entered the world. May our task be that Christ come alive in us. Each day, let us ask ourselves as missionary disciples, what is one way that we can bring the light and love of Christ to others that we encounter. It's not just one assignment, but that we ask that question every day in a world that truly longs for light, that longs for friendship and compassion and companionship. So on this day, on behalf of the staff, on behalf of Father Dan and the Parish of Maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I wish you and your family a blessed and Merry Christmas. And now, may Christ come alive through us as we go forth. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Joy to